welcome to today's lecture on inversion mechanisms and genetic consequences dear students first of all you must know that chromosomes are the carriers of genetic information in the form of linear order of genes which are present on these chromosomes the whole chromosome complement of an organism which is known as karyotype is generally fixed for a species or fixed for the organisms of that species sometimes in this karyotype or the chromosomal complement variations occur there are two types of variations which occur in these chromosomes one is the numerical variation which include aneuploidy meaning gain or loss of a chromosome and the polyploidy where the chromosomal complement multiplies from the basic set on the other hand we have structural changes in the chromosome where chromosomal segments are rearranged or reshuffled between the chromosomes these structural changes occur either spontaneously in nature with the help of x rays or mechanical shear or gamma rays or by transposable elements which are generally present in the chromosomes these chromosomal segments are rearranged during the course of evolution and are responsible for giving rise to new organisms or new phenotypes depending upon the amount of change however these changes can also result into death of an organism or can also result into several types of defects in an individual whether plant or animal basically the origin of these structural changes is by a breakage and reunion process breakage means the chromosomal segments within the chromosomes break and then these broken segments reunite they are generally sticky in nature and reunite with either their own ends or they can reunite with other chromosomal ends and in this way different types of structural changes can occur these structural changes can be classified into four main types number 1 deletion number 2 duplication number 3 inversion number 4 translocation in case of deletion there is a loss of genetic material as far as the chromosome main chromosome in which this change takes place is concerned whereas in case of inversion and translocation there is no loss of genetic material from the concerned cell however the order of the genes is changed the genes are reshuffled now structural homozygote and structural heterozygote structural homozygote we call that individual in which both the homologous chromosomes of a homologous pair have the structural change whether it is a deletion or duplication or translocation or inversion so it is called then accordingly respectively deletion homozygote duplication homozygote translocation homozygote or inversion homozygote on the other hand if out of the two homologous chromosomes of a pair only one of the chromosome carries the structural change whereas other chromosome is normal that individual is known as structural heterozygote our main topic today is inversion so we will focus on this mainly by definition inversion means reverse order of genes that means a particular segment of the chromosome which carries one or few genes is reoriented in that position within the chromosome and hence the order of the genes is reversed we will discuss the origin and production of these inversions inversions are produced by 
breakage and reunion process. A segment at a particular chromosome must have two breaks so that the segment gets first released at that position and then that segment rotates at 180 degree centigrade or sometimes the chromosome itself forms a coil like situation or a loop like situation which facilitates reversion of this chromosomal segment. The joining of this segment is concerned with the chromosome from which this segment was broken results into the inversion. Breakage occurs either spontaneously or it can also be induced. For example, this breakage can occur by a mechanical shear during uh, when the chromosomes are entangled during interphase or this mechanical shear can occur at the time of replication. This breakage can also occur with the help of transposable elements. Transposable elements are small DNA elements, we call them selfish DNA elements, which have the ability to move from one chromosomal part to another part. And during their movement, they cause breaks to enter themselves within the chromosomes. So, sometimes those breaks remain there and when there are two such breaks, the chromosomal segment gets released and then sometimes it reorients or rotates at 180 degrees centigrade and then fuses with its normal part of the chromosome. But the reversion has taken place and hence the inversion takes place. Similar breakage can also be induced with the help of chemical mutagens or with the help of physical mutagens like X-rays, gamma rays, etc. These mutagens have the ability to break phosphodiester bonds within the DNA molecules and hence induce breaks within the DNA. After break has taken place, these broken ends of the chromosome are generally sticky in nature. Sticky word means that these broken ends have the ability to fuse here with any other broken end. Otherwise, normal chromosome, if we see, there are telomeres which prevent fusion. But when there is a break within the chromosome, so that end becomes naked so that we call it a sticky end and it has the ability to fuse with another such end. So whenever such break occur, whether spontaneously or induced, these broken ends tend to fuse with each other and in this way the inversions are produced. And finally, the order of genes is also reversed. Broken segment can either be a heterochromatic segment. If it is a heterochromatic segment, then there is no effect on the organism. It is reversion will not affect at all. But this broken segment can also carry one or few genes. And if this is so, there are genes on this broken segment and reversion has taken place, then there are serious consequences on the cytological behavior, on the breeding behavior of the organism as far as these genes which are involved in this inversion are concerned. We have two main types of inversions. One is called paracentric inversion and another is called pericentric inversion. First of all, what is paracentric inversion? Paracentric inversion means when the breakage of the DNA segment takes place in only one of the arm of the chromosome. In other words means that centromere is not involved. When breakage takes place in one of the arm, whether it is a long arm or it is a short arm, then only that arm is involved in that inversion and hence no centromere is involved. In this case, when paracentric inversion, heterozygote undergoes meiosis and the inverted chromosome takes part in a crossing over event with the normal chromosome, then there is a formation of dicentric bridge formation and an acentric fragment formation. Then this dicentric bridge as well as acentric fragment are finally lost as far as consequences of this crossing over in this paracentric inversion are concerned that only 25% of the gametes you will find will be normal completely 
whereas another 25 percent will carry inversion and 50 percent of the gametes you will find defective. Then what is pericentric inversion? Pericentric inversion means when breakage takes place in both arms of the chromosome in long arm as well as short arm or if a chromosome has both long arms for example a metacentric chromosome in both the arms the breakage takes place that means one break takes place in one of the arm and another break takes place in another arm so these two breaks in between these two breaks there is a centromere then a reversion of this broken segment which will also involve now centromere will result into an inversion and that inversion is called pericentric inversion. When a pericentric inversion heterozygote organism undergoes meiosis, then we will not find here a bridge-like situation, a dicentric bridge-like situation or a fragment formation, but here the chromosomes with deletions and duplications are produced as a product of meiosis. Here also you will find that almost 50 percent of the gametes are completely defective as far as pericentric inversion are concerned. In short, both these pericentric as well as pericentric inversions, they have serious consequences with respect to their meiotic behavior as well as with respect to their breeding behavior. Let us take this example we have a chromosome with the order of genes A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H and I. The centromere in this chromosome is present between E and F. On the other hand, in case of pericentric inversion, you will see in this case the segment which is involved in this breakage is D, E, F, G. Between E and F there is a centromere and a reunion of this segment in an inverse manner will produce a pericentric inversion and hence the order of genes now is A, B, C, G, F, E, D, H, I. Now in case of pericentric inversion, a segment B, C, D, E is broken from the main chromosome and here after it is a reunion with the main chromosome, the order of genes is now changed. It is now, in case of paracentric inversion, the order of genes is now A, E, D, C, B, F, G, H, I. Finally, we come to the genetic consequences of inversions. First of all, there is no loss of genetic information. That means, since the genes are not ultimately lost from the cell, the genes are actually there in the chromosome, but they are in the reverse order. So, these genes will basically produce their products, undergo normal type of expression and then produce their products and finally exert their phenotypic effect on the organism. But the condition is that the breakage at the time of inversion should not have taken place within the structural part of the gene or within the regulatory segment of the gene. So, otherwise there is normal expression of the organism. Then another effect which has been found as far as inversions are concerned, we call it breakpoint effect. As far as the expression of genes is concerned, some genes are, con their expression is controlled by the regulatory elements. Sometimes inversion takes place in such a manner that the breakage occurs within this regulatory element of the gene or within the structural part of the gene. If such a situation occurs, then after the inversion has taken place, this expression of the gene will be affected, of the gene will be lost. So, this we call as breakpoint effect, which affects the gene expression and finally the phenotype of the organism is affected. We have another genetic consequence of inversion, we call it as position effect. You must know that 
genes basically perform their normal functions with respect to their positions. We call it this position locus of the gene. This position is very important for the gene as it performs its normal function there because the functioning of gene is basically related to number of interactions, intra-allelic as well as inter-allelic interactions. For example, there is dominance recessive relationship, there is epistatic interaction, there is complementary interaction or there can be duplicate interaction or other types of interactions which are only found at its respective position. When this position of the gene is changed, in case of inversion, the order of the genes is totally reversed and hence the position of this gene is changed. When this position is changed, these interactions are not found in its respective environment now where the gene is present or it can be displaced, for example, from its regulatory element say, because of this inversion. So all these events result into the change in position of the gene. All these events finally affect the phenotype. That effect we call as position effect. Another consequence is formation of defective gametes during the meiosis where chromosome products of meiosis we see that dicentric bridge, acentric fragment, chromosomes with deletions or duplications produce defective gametes and these defective gametes do not take part in fertilization at all. So ultimate consequence is that as far as these defective gametes are concerned, if they take part in fertilization, they will produce defective individuals which may lead to death of those individuals or lost. With this, we conclude today's lecture on inversion. See you next time. Thank you very much.